Hi everybody, it's Bridget Danner here with your cleanse prep video. Uh, I hope you can watch the whole thing and I encourage you to watch it also if you're on the uh, gut flora cleanse because I think uh, a lot of this information applies to everyone and I'd like everyone to follow the diet. Um, so welcome, I'm so excited to be doing this with you. We have a, we had turned out to have a pretty good sized group um, uh, with a lot of returning clients. And that just makes me super happy because I love this cleanse and I'm just so happy to see other people valuing it and choosing to do it again. Um, so I want to uh, make sure for returning members that the information I present um, is fresh and um, and valuable to you so I am going to uh, make sure to give you a lot of information about nutrition and quality of food that you can continue to use um, so my theme for this cleanse is uh, creating lasting change so I think this cleanse in itself is valuable as a short-term tool to to pull toxins out of your tissue and um, create waste from them and get them out of your body. Um, but what I really love is that this can be a, a long-term tool to just making your diet and your lifestyle choices better every day for your whole life. Um, you know, unfortunately we can't spend three weeks a year being really good and spend the other, you know, is it 49 weeks, you know, just putting junk into our bodies. So it, it needs to be more balanced. So this cleanse is great to do, you know, once, twice a year to just clean up um, and get, and especially I think, get back into better habits. So this is going to be my third time doing the cleanse. And every time I'm excited to get back to it because inevitably I've slipped out of some of my good habits. Um, but I do find that every time I do the cleanse, it, it gets better. Um, so just to share a little bit about my experience on the first cleanse, I felt really hungry the whole time, even though, you know, I was eating as instructed and I figured, well, this is just how it is. Um, I also definitely had more cravings, like I was, you know, wanting to eat certain things when I got off the cleanse. Um, but the, one of the benefits that came from that is I really learned to like prepare food ahead of time more and that I could find the time to uh, feed my family really healthy meals. Uh, it wasn't, you know, impossible. And then when I did the cleanse the second time around, um, I really didn't have cravings or feel hungry. Um, I just, I felt fine. Um, so now I kind of learned that those cravings were based on nutritional deficiencies in my body. They weren't really based on like lack of calories. Um, so we can, we're going to talk more about that. Um, and then, what was I going to say? Yeah, I, I've definitely like learned about you know, noticing my food sensitivities more since doing these cleanses. You know, I, for example, I met a friend for, at a coffee shop the other day and just wanted a little snack and had a half a grilled cheese sandwich, which I don't normally do, and felt felt pretty bad for the next three hours and uh, you know just being aware that like what you eat has consequences and you know the more you know um, the signs that certain foods that are upsetting you the more you can choose to avoid them or not it becomes a more powerful choice because you know um, you know what it's going to do to you so you can choose to eat it on occasion um, but there's, you know, you know that you're responsible for your own health, and, and that's empowering. Um, so yeah, and one more, a couple more things that I've kind of learned is, um, you know, since with this cleanse, you pretty much have to make all your own food. Uh, I've really gotten better at packing food, like, you know, pretty much every day of the week now, my husband and I pack a salad for lunch, and if you're having a salad every day, you're getting like more servings of vegetables and you're getting some raw raw food enzymes that you need um, and it's super easy to do it takes like no time at all to pack a salad uh, another thing I, I feel like these cleanses have just inspired me to learn more about nutrition so I'm going to share some of the things I'm learning with you and some resources so you can um, just continue your own learning okay so 
yeah, when I, when I, I'm going to go through uh, how to do the cleanse, and uh, as we go, I'm going to kind of highlight things that are forever habits, I'm calling them. So there's certain things you're going to do just on this cleanse, but there's some things I'd encourage you to do forever moving forward just for your best health. Okay, so when you get your um, packet, you maybe the first thing you want to do is look at this little booklet. And uh, it's a pretty good resource about, uh, it definitely has like the routine in it and shopping lists, some recipes, quantities of food you can eat. Um, there's a journal in there if you want to journal how you're feeling. Um, let's see. So there's a few things actually that we are doing a little different from this packet. So one thing is that it says the first, I think, seven to ten days to have no animal protein, um, but we are allowing that. So it's up to you. If you want to spend the first part of the cleanse with no animal protein, that's your choice. But you know, if you're working and you just feel better with the energy, uh, in the past we've just done protein from day one on this cleanse. Uh, so the protein sources. Uh, you want, generally speaking, double fish to chicken. So if you have, you know, four servings of fish a week, then two of chicken. That's kind of the ratio you want to, to do, aim for. And the fish needs to be deep sea fish, so salmon, cod, and sea bass are the few that they mostly mention. And you want to get wild caught fish. You don't want farm raised fish. That's a forever habit. That's farm raised fish. You know, the, the quality is poor, there's more chance that it's like kind of like a genetically modified kind of um, fish, basically, and um, those fish aren't as healthy, and often they're swimming in a lot more waste in a farm-raised environment, so you want to go for the wild fish. Um, and then same for the, the chicken, uh, you want organic, free-range chicken. It, you know, it does make a difference in the amount of toxins in the flesh. Um, so generally, for another forever habit is when, when, you, when you're thinking about buying organic, the higher you go on the food chain, the more you want to say, yeah, I'm choosing organic. So cheese is a very dense food, you know, animal flesh is. So you want those foods to be organic, even if you can't afford to buy every single vegetable in organic. Um, better to make sure your animal sources are organic, you know, your eggs too. Vegetarian fed, you want like grass fed uh, animals as much as possible. You know, animals didn't traditionally eat um, big like bins of grain, so they, they eat grass out in the field, so that's always preferable. Um, another thing to note that isn't in this book is um, you can have quinoa as a grain. It's not listed, but you can go ahead and have that. Uh, another change I make is I cut the fiber in half the first three days. Um, fiber is great for you, but it's just an adjustment. So I find it's just safer to do half the half the amount of fiber the first few days. Uh, and another thing on that note is that we so here's your fiber. You're you're either getting a gastro fiber or a whole food fiber, whoops, here you go, <laughs> um, and uh, we, we just got one for this cleanse, there's an option to get two, but you end up with a lot of extra stuff, so we just got one, but that means you have to use it like a little more sparingly, so it says to have it three times a day, and you can pr probably just start out with two times a day, and then uh, towards the end, if there's extra, um, move up to three times a day. Uh, and same for the shake. So this is your shake mix here. And uh, we can probably just manage two times a day to have the shake, which frankly is all I was ever usually having it as before. Uh, if you're finding you like the fiber, you like the shake, you want more of it, you can just order more. Uh, we're just kind of experimenting with this, this new model right now. So this, this model includes um, a treatment, unless you're living out of town or, or something. Um, it includes a treatment so you can get more personalized care, and then we got a little less product this time. Okay. Um, so another rule of thumb I think they do mention here is you want double vegetables to fruits during this cleanse. 
that's really important. And that's a forever habit. So fruit is, is easy and sweet, so a lot of people choose it for a snack and feel healthy, but it still contains high sugar. The fructose needs to be burned right away. If it's not burned, it will be stored as fat in your liver. It will circulate in your blood and um, make your circulation worse. Um, so this might be kind of news to some people, but I would say keep your, you know, keep your fruits to one or two a day is uh, generally what I say. And then when you add fruits to your shakes, like just add like half a banana to make two days shake, um, or, you know, half a cup of blueberry to make two shakes. Um, don't go crazy with the, the fruit in your shakes. Uh, let's see. Um, so let me just show you some things you might uh, want to have around on the cleanse. Um, let's see. So I'm a big fan of these like big salad packs because um, they're already washed and ready to go and you can make a whole bunch of salads that week. And there's also spinach packs. Um, a little thing to note is you really want your spinach cooked, spinach salad. Um, this is a kind of a chemical in the spinach that needs to be broken down for you to absorb the nutrients. So have the spinach like lightly steamed. But salad, go ahead and <laughs> eat salad. Um, so you want to emphasize fresh uh, seasoning. So here's some cilantro. This is some rosemary from our yard, some garlic. Uh, you want to emphasize fresh seasonings, but I don't keep it like a strict rule. So you can also use... Um, you know, dried seasonings. Uh, this is turmeric, which is a great thing to know about forever. Um, turmeric is an anti-inflammatory herb, so it's really good for, for your joints. And if you're making a curry, you can add a bunch of turmeric. Um, we have some recipes you'll get later that have turmeric in them. Uh, let's see. So when you um, are thinking about oils, when you're cooking, you want to use coconut oil. Um, coconut oil is actually helps you like control your weight. It helps your immune system. It's a really great oil, and it withstands heat when you're cooking. It withstands high heat. So this is another like kind of forever habit to get into. Um, only kind of I think peanut oil and coconut oil and butter can withstand like the high heat. Um, so. A lot of people say, oh, I cook with olive oil, olive oil's healthy. Olive oil's heat sensitive and it's meant to be a dressing, not a, not a cooking oil. You can use olive oil, say you steam some veggies and then you drizzle olive oil over it, or obviously on salads, um, but it, yeah, it's not actually for stir frying. Um, here's another oil you can use for salads. So again, this is a heat sensitive oil, this is flax oil. Um, so yeah, use it on top of oatmeal or on top of your food. This one's from Trader Joe's. Eh, I'm not <laughs> super, I'm not sure if I, I like it as much as the ones from New Seasons. Um, the new ones from New Seasons are in a black plastic bottle in the refrigerated section and I feel like they, just my sense of it is they're a little better quality. Um, so I just found out you can use a little butter on this cleanse. I was surprised to see that. Um, so butter gets a bad rap, but it's actually not really that bad for you. So for the past, uh, here's a little side story. For the past about 60 years, there's been the theory of, of heart disease that cholesterol causes heart disease, so you need to avoid cholesterol. And it was kind of too confusing to say which types of fats the public couldn't have, so they just said, you know, cut back on fat. Um, but actually that whole theory was, was, there basically wasn't any science behind it. It was just kind of a, a vocal person's theory and then um, companies kind of ran with it. So companies such as um, companies that were making the first margarines and um, the first vegetable oils really ran with that theory. Uh, but um, all those vegetable oils, so I'm going to give you some examples of no-nos. So canola oil in your salad dressing, and this is a canola, soybean, blend oil, and margarine. 
all these are basically like modern oils that you know often just came up because so for example cottonseed oil was one of the first synthetic oils and there was all these extra cotton seeds laying around from the cotton industry and they learned that you could through a violent chemical process <laughs> extract some oils and turn it into something that looked like margarine um, so it was it was big business because producing like all this butter is you know a lot more expensive uh, than producing a cheap cottonseed oil so those um, those foods I'll put say foods became <laughs> being a game created and um, they're actually pretty pretty bad for your body so vegetable oil in your body really much easier becomes rancid something like this you know to be honest I didn't know that this was so bad this is one of those ones that say trans fat free you know made with olive oil but it's just it's just too processed it's just it's almost like a plastic um, it's almost like you know you can buy those cups made of corn now well it's almost like they're taking like corn oil and whipping it up into a near solid and then they're feeding it to us but it's it's really like a highly processed food that once it gets inside your body your body doesn't really know what to do with it so it creates inflammation in your body and then when that inflammation gets in the vessels of your heart uh, it's it gets kind of um, smoothed over by cholesterol so cholesterol is often not really the first problem it's the second problem so it's inflammation in your body and then cholesterol is created. So at the turn of the century, heart disease was actually very rare. And then now that we're eating all this fake oil, it's actually it's become really common. So uh, I think you will see over the next you know 10, 20 years that the theory about um, vegetable oil being, being good and saturated fat being bad is is you're gonna hear more and more in the mainstream that. Um, that's not the story anymore. So go ahead and eat some butter, <laughs> and when this cleanse is over, you can, you know, eat a little bacon. You know, don't be afraid to get some, some good healthy whole food fats from eggs and from animal products. And then when you're having vegetable oil, make sure it's flax oil, olive oil, coconut oil, like good quality oils. And you, and you do want to spend money on these things. You don't want to just get like the cheapest olive oil. A lot of that stuff is actually a blend. It's not even real olive oil or it's just like bottom of the barrel worst olive oil. So it's worth spending some money. Uh, so other things you might need for making salads, so you can have vinegars. Um, so you're not gonna be using any packaged salad dressing. So just use fresh herbs. You know, you can have all the salt and pepper you want. Um, lemon and vinegar and oil you know you, you can make your own salad dressings and let's see so some other tips to make your life easier uh, this first weekend that you start the cleanse you've got the whole weekend hopefully to experiment uh, I like to on the weekend roast some vegetables I've got some roasted beets and beet greens in here you just chop it up and uh, put in some garlic salt and pepper and coconut oil and just bake it for about 45 minutes. Um, you can do the same with squash. Uh, I like to make stuff on the weekend and then it'll last you, once you're on this cleanse, it'll only last you a few days, but, um, cause you're gonna be eating this stuff all the time. But make some brown rice ahead of time, make some quinoa ahead of time. Um, chop, you can even just chop some vegetables and that way when you're ready to steam them from day to day, you've got You've got them chopped up. Uh, you definitely want to make your life easy on this cleanse, and that's mostly around being prepared. So if you, you know, you have nothing left in the fridge, um, and you're, you know, going to a event at work, you're gonna be hungry and you're gonna be miserable. So just make sure you've you've prepared yourself. Um, another thing that can make your life a little more enjoyable on the cleanse is sweet potato. Um, there's no potato on the cleanse. Sweet potato is a more complex potato and it has um, it lowers your blood sugar yet less. But it does have like a little sweet, satisfying taste. So you can just bake it and have a like a half of a one, or you can put it in um, 
put it in stews, or you can make, we have a recipe for sweet potato fries that you can try. Uh, let me show you some grains. I don't have, all I have is handy, it's brown rice. So one thing I was going to encourage on this cleanse that I'm just learning about is, um, is sprouting your grains. So, you know, it's pretty easy, you just put the grain in a bowl of water, you know, cover it with water and put like a cloth over top of it uh, and let it sit for at least 24 hours. Um, so I'm just learning about all this and I, you know, I used to just soak, here's some, I used to just soak lentils for a few, like an hour at least, and I think if you're in a pinch, like it's fine, just soak it for an hour. You can soak it with a little vinegar or lemon, I don't think you have to. Uh, I also often soak it with a chunk of fresh ginger um, that kind of helps your digestion. So I'd say minimum soak things for an hour before you, you use them, but preferably a day or more, and you just want to change the water every day. So, um, so if you set something to soak at night, then maybe in the morning change the water, and the next night, you know, make your lentils. Um, you know, it sounds like a, a bit of work, but as I'm you know, learning about sprouting grains, uh, basically in nature, uh, you know, a nut doesn't want to get eaten by an animal. It wants to um, store its nutrients and then create a plant. It wants to reproduce. So a lot of the nutrients are sort of bound up in uh, compounds in the grain until they get water and they can start to sprout. And when they sprout, they know they're creating new life and all the nutrients come out. So you want to soak things and let them start to break down and, and sprout a little bit. I think the longer you soak it, the more it's going to sprout. Uh, I think for the purpose of this cleanse, you know, you just want to basically break down the, the compounds that are keeping the nutrients in and it, it will make the grains more digestible. Um, so I like these little lentils quite a bit. They break down nicely and you can kind of make a stew with cilantro and sweet potato. Um, or you can put them with like curry spices. Uh, and here's another kind of lentil that you can use too. Um, this one's good too. I just kind of vary, you know, you're going to be eating a lot of lentils, so just experiment. Uh, so something you'll definitely need is a blender for your shakes and something that you don't need but you might want is a, a rice cooker and they, they usually have a little steaming basket on top that you can buy. And they're not that expensive and it's just nice to set your grains to cook and not have to check on them. Okay. Oh, and I just wanted to share um, a book right, that I'm reading right now that I like uh, called Deep Nutrition, and it was written by a real doctor who is amazingly really into nutrition and knows a ton about it, and she's really great. Um, so I'm going to share as we go some things I'm learning from her. So she talks about sprouting grains and eating raw food and traditional food, eating fermented food, which we're not doing on this cleanse, but... Um, you can learn more about in this book. Okay, so just uh, one last thing on kind of getting into the swing of it. I would say this first weekend, get you know get familiar with the products and when you take them, um, get lots of ingredients. You have a shopping list in the book. Um, we'll send you some recipes. There's some recipes in the book. There are recipes online. Um, just start cooking. You're going to be doing quite a bit of cooking uh, and then get in a routine. So say you have your shake in the morning and then maybe a small meal at 10 and then maybe another shake and then lunch and then a snack and then dinner. You want to eat often. You want This is another forever habit. You want to eat often, ideally every two hours to keep your blood sugar stable. Um, it doesn't have to be a huge meal. I just have you know a handful of nuts not on this cleanse, but later you can have a handful of nuts, um, you know, have an apple, just, uh, especially if you have protein or fats to keep your, keep your energy up throughout the day. Um, 
so yeah, just you just want to get on a little routine and you want to know you have plenty of groceries and plenty of foods prepared. Uh, a lot of these things do take a little time to prepare, so if you can think you know, a few days ahead of time, then you won't get in a pinch. Uh, and I hope you really enjoy it, um, even if you're not much of a cook. You know, if you come up with a handful of things you like, you know, some steamed vegetables over brown rice, or you know, a piece of salmon and a big salad, and then maybe you come up with a few soups and lentil stews. You know, it's it's plenty for three weeks, and uh, it will inspire you hopefully to do more. Okay, so a few um, things to kind of watch out for is when I talked about cravings a little bit. So when you crave sugar or carbs. Um, it's kind of a chicken and the egg thing with mineral deficiency. So when you um, eat, say, a bowl of white pasta, you need minerals to break down those carbs for energy. So if you're not getting them because the pasta is a kind of stripped down product, you have to use your reserves of minerals like chromium and selenium to, um, to digest the pasta. So now you've got a mineral deficiency, and that mineral deficiency triggers a sugar craving. Um, and then you eat the more sugar, and then you get more depleted of minerals. So uh, if you're concerned that, that that sounds like you, you can ask us about some mineral supplementation. Uh, and there's a great herb called Hymnema. It's an Indian herb that's used for diabetes and blood sugar control. It's amazing for reducing your cravings. And um, I've been using it lately, um, you know, I still like crave sweets after eating. So you just take the himena and then if you go to eat something sweet, it, it doesn't taste like anything. It it's somehow magically <laughs> makes your sweet taste go away. Um, and then internally, it's doing quite a bit too, to uh, it, within your intestines, kind of shut down the markers that make you crave certain things. And then it also makes your blood sugar more stable throughout the day. So that's an option if you if you want that, let us know. Um, also, when you eat uh, sweet things, it it activates a pleasure center in your brain. So when you're not getting that, the craving could be really severe. So just try to do other things that give you pleasure, and try not to fixate on that thing. And you can always have like a little sweet potato or avocado, something that's satisfying for you um, that isn't, isn't that simple carb. Um, so another thing that you should watch out for is constipation. You're definitely not meant to get constipated on this cleanse, but I think just adding so much fiber and your body processing a lot of toxins, you could get a slowdown. So there's a few things you can do. Right away you can drink more water. You can get more exercise. Uh, they recommend a lot of walking on this cleanse. Um, you can use, um, let's see, oh you can get more oils. So oils kind of help soothe the digestive tract and get things moving out. And then we have a, a supplement that you could add in if you're really having trouble with constipation. Just let us know. Definitely communicate if this is happening for you. Um, and what else was I going to say? Um, well, another option is we can just slow down the cleanse. So if, if the cleanse is milder, you're going to get less side effects. So we can do that. Uh, another thing that you might experience is joint pain. So at first we are, the first supplement you take, the SP cleanse, helps you pull the toxins out of the tissue and break them down into smaller pieces, toxic metabolites. Um, and then from there, they need to be eliminated through the body, through urine, and through bile uh, that goes through your digestive tract. But if the quantity of toxic metabolites is too big for your body to digest of, um, they will sort of store in different places like your joints. Basically, they're in like a holding pattern in your joints, which is actually the reason a lot of people have arthritis and joint pain is they're just having, uh, they're just having toxic storage in their joints. So if you're experiencing this, it's not permanent. Uh, again, you can exercise, you can use heat packs, you can dry brush your skin, you can take an Epsom salt bath, um, 
you can get more water, that's a great idea. You can walk. Uh, and again, you can slow down the cleanse if you need to. If it's too intense for you, you can slow things down. Um, nothing bad is happening. It's just, uh, it's just, um, you know, things are getting stored. So just communicate if you have that. Uh, another thing is headaches. So it's, this especially usually comes from coming off caffeine. Hopefully you've been dialing down on the caffeine, um, like at leading up to the cleanse. Um, but if you haven't been and you've got a raging <laughs> migraine, it's okay to have like a sip of coffee, like organic coffee or a sip of tea if you just need it to like get through work. Uh, I don't want to encourage <laughs> that though. If you're just craving it, you'll get over the craving. It's, you'll get over it quicker than you think. Um, so again, have more water. You can slow down the cleanse. Um, you can talk to us and we'll come up with ideas. You know, the first week is is when all the toxic dumping is happening. So if you're going to get symptoms, it's probably going to be just this first week and you might hate me for a couple days, but you'll get over it and then you'll you're going to be fine. So I've seen seen it happen before, so I'm not too worried. Um so one I've only once had this complaint, but that maybe the weight loss was too excessive for someone. If you feel like you're losing weight too fast, you're welcome to talk to us about it. Um, it I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. Um, even if you're somewhat thin, you know, you can still lose a little bit of weight on this cleanse. A lot of it's just the kind of the processed food weight that we put on and for some people, I think that can just start flying off on this cleanse. But just communicate with us. Uh, if you'd like to be losing more weight, just watch your portions, especially of the grains uh, and heavy foods, and emphasize the vegetables. Uh, don't cut back on the fats. The fats are good for you, but cut back on the carbs. And there's a supplement that we can recommend if, if you'd like more help in losing weight. Okay, I think that those are most of the warnings, but again, it's just mainly the first week and then things get better. So, um, if you uh, still have a few more days, just keep cutting down the caffeine, get familiar with the, the information, and um, thanks again. Thanks for listening. I hope you learned some things, and um, we'll be in touch. Thanks.